Good morning. This is Mark, and uh, being kind of quiet this morning because everyone is still in bed. Uh, today is going to be the first time in 2020 that I do a backflip, first time this season, and uh, unlike riding a bike, it is something that does not just stick with you and feel comfortable, and you just come back each season and you know, nonchalantly go out and throw a backflip, at least not for me. Backflips are kind of a major one for me. Um, they make me nervous. I think it's actually that fear and success ratio that makes it worth it. That's the attraction. Um, but when you get into your 50s, you don't want to risk failure more than you have to. So there's a couple things that I can do to help make myself prepared mentally and physically to uh, land maybe even my first attempt. I hope my first attempt for the season because as you get older, each failure gets harder and harder. And uh, backflips aren't really that hard, but some of the failures can be kind of harsh. So uh, I'm gonna share with you what I go through and uh, to, to prepare and maybe even as a younger person this would be helpful because it'll set yourself up for success all right so the first thing is I'm gonna head out I've got a trampoline back in the backyard and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do some on the trampoline that improves your aerial awareness and your confidence um, you can think back to that motion when you're on the mountain and it's gonna be a lot easier than just coming in stone cold. And of course, if you've never done a backflip, you need to learn it somewhere else before you just take it to the snow. So the trampoline is a great option uh, if you have access to a foam pit or an airbag on the mountain. Those are really helpful as well. All right, so kind of fortunate because uh, this particular January, actually it's unfortunate, but we don't have any snow right now. So I don't even have to shovel off the trampoline. Uh oh, there's actually like a little frost. Check this out. I mean, it's, it's, it's frozen. I got it swept off. It's a little better, it's still kind of slippery, but I guess if I'm balanced, it shouldn't be a problem. So what I try on the trampoline um, is to make sure that I'm going up rotating and coming down pretty much in the same spot i tend to drift back a little bit but if you spring from one end of the trampoline back over and, and, and land way on the other side of the trampoline you're probably preempting your spin which if you do that on the mountain is going to destroy your pop you're not going to have any lift off the end of the jump because you're initiating your rotation prematurely before you get to the lip of the jump so uh that's what I'll be focusing on. I'm gonna pop a few here. Then I'm gonna get changed, go to the mountain, and uh, we'll try it out. Those are all pretty good. Well, that's it. No sense doing it until I start screwing them up. All right, so that took about five minutes and it's gonna greatly increase my confidence on the mountain. And I know, you guys that are really good, you're like, what's all the fuss about? Stop talking, stop thinking about it and just get out there and do it. But that's not me, so now you know. <laughs> all right, I'll check back in on the mountain. Okay, so we're here, we're at the mountain. Granite Peak. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do is check out the jump that I think I wanna use. So this is the jump I'm looking at. And what I wanna see here is uh, about a full second in the air, like a 1,001. That's got the cadence that I'm used to on the trampoline. So the more variables I could take out, the better. So I'm gonna watch a few people go off, look at their speed, 1,001. All right, he took it pretty deep. Definitely deeper than I want to for my backflips. I'm gonna watch a few guys come down. There we go, here comes somebody. No, none of them. <laughs> How come none of you guys hit the jump? What? How come nobody hit the jump? I cased it really good. You cased it? Yeah. All right. I just don't know the speed. Yeah, that's what I'm down here doing. I'm figuring out the speed. So here comes some rippers. We'll watch them, right? Yeah. 
All right, so these guys are rippers. I recognize them. Yeah. yeah. Woo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A thousand one. Woo. Instead of coming in and taking uh, a number of speed checks, I wanted to take that variable out. I want to know that I'm dialed in on the speed. I got enough fear and enough things going on in my mind. I don't really want to be dealing with getting the right speed. So I lined myself up because I took a several runs through earlier and I know when I'm lined up at this tree, I can just drop straight in, no speed checks, just point it and go. So now no speed checks, straight in. 1001. So a couple of other things. Again, you already know how to do a backflip. So this is transitioning that skill to the snow on your snowboard. So a couple things that I think were helpful that uh, other people told me. One is, uh, as you're approaching the jump, open your shoulders up so they're parallel to the lip of the jump. That puts you in the laid out, straight back rotation for a laid out backflip. Uh, the other thing is, um, as you're approaching the jump, you're coming into the transition area, put your weight over your back foot. You're already kind of leaning back that way, and it makes it easier to initiate that back flip rotation. And then finally, uh, you want to wait until your front foot is completely off the lip. If you don't, you may rotate too early, and that destroys your pop, and it also, uh, you might even actually hit your head on the jump on the way off. I've seen it done. <laughs> so. Uh, Wait till that front foot is off the lip of the jump and then rotate. Other than that, it's the same technique as any other backflip uh, that you've already learned in other venues. All right, I'm gonna put this up uh, somewhere where you can see this attempt and hopefully it goes well. I guess I'll just put it right here. Just know that I'm dropping straight in from that point I talked about. All right, so I got a few under my belt. They weren't real pretty, but they weren't so bad either. I mean, I didn't fall or get hurt or anything like that. So I'm pretty stoked. Now, uh, I've got this uncomfortable thing I gotta do, which is try to get somebody to do a follow cam. I'm gonna ask, we'll see if I can get anybody to bite. I'll follow them twice if they'll follow me once. Yeah, would you do that? That was easy. Hold on, stay up there. <laughs> Ooh, let me catch my breath. <laughs> so I got a tanner now, and I uh, get to give it another shot. I'm ready. All right, so things I'm thinking about, I got my spot right here. I'm lined up with the tree that I wanted. I'm gonna put a little weight over my back foot as I'm coming into the transition. I'm gonna wait for my front foot to be off the jump, initiate my rotation. Watch till I can spot the landing, stomp it, and right away. Ready? Yep. All right, here we go. After several backflips dropping in from the same spot, it'll no longer be necessary to line up with that tree to remove the speed variable. I can drop straight in from the top and mix it up with other tricks as I go through the jump line. Now there are a couple of critical pointers that I'd like to share with you. These are things that I've learned the hard way. With backflips, once you commit, you have to follow through. Your head dictates your rotation and your body's going to follow. If you lose commitment after initiating your rotation, it will probably look something like this, or maybe even worse. Another thing to be careful of is scrubbing too much speed on your way into the jump. If you do this, you're likely to under-rotate and hit the knuckle, and trust me, it does not feel good. All right, so I feel awesome. I got uh, four or five. I didn't have any real bad falls or anything. Uh, I hope. I hope this video has been helpful to any of you that are trying to bring a backflip to the snow. 
Um, all of the pointers that I gave to you are things that were helpful that somebody else shared with me. So uh, with that said, I'm done talking. Thanks for watching, I'm checking out, and uh, we'll see you on the hill. Thanks, bye.